This is John Cola with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, and I hate calling out people, and I'm not going to call out any people today, but what I want to do for you guys today is give you guys a basic nutrition course, like in, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes in this episode, right? I'm on YouTube most days. You know, it's one of the things I do in the morning before I get out of bed. I watch YouTube for a little bit, uh, meditate, and get out of bed. And, you know, sometimes I see the stupidest videos online, especially from some people that eat raw foods that make certain, in my opinion, exaggerated claims that could be true, but in the case that I'm going to share with you guys is not true. And, you know, I like, I wish that people that want to eat a all fruit diet, which I do not recommend eating an all fruit diet, I think it is quite insane. While it can be done potentially, healthfully, if you really plan it out, just eating haphazardly, eating just only fruit without eating vegetables, I think, while it's better than eating a standard American diet, it will hurt your health in the long run, in the long term, and you're going to have some really big problems in the future, in your future health. Yes, anybody could deal with a fruitarian, pure fruitarian diet for a limited amount of time, and there are exceptions of people that have eaten it for a longer period of time, but I don't encourage you guys to do it because it does take a lot more planning and a lot more intelligence. And in my personal opinion, you can't get everything you need from eating only fruit without eating vegetables and even excluding or restricting other categories of plants and non-animal foods. So I don't want you guys to do it. As you guys can see, I'm sitting in my garden today and this is my amazing bed of bok choy, right? What I'll be talking about mostly in this episode is protein. <laughs> bok choy is one of the vegetables that is highest in protein. And that's what I want to give you guys a lesson on today in protein. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and go over to the laptop. And we're going to basically uh, go over what two different raw vegan fruitarians ate in a day according to their shorts. And they're like, oh yeah, we ate this fruit, this fruit, and this fruit. And then I basically take the amount they ate, put it in a chronometer to show you guys how much protein they got to find out if they ate enough protein for the day. So now I want to show you guys the chronometer of one of the shorts I saw of a raw vegan fruitarian that exclaimed, this is what I have for breakfast. I had one young coconut water. So I said that's like 12 ounces of coconut water for 88.57 calories. And then I had one half a watermelon, which I said was about 48 ounces, which is maybe I'm oversizing it a little bit, but that's 400 calories. And they ate two giant green mangoes i'm gonna say they're keat mangoes pretty large 30 ounces each um 60 ounces total that's a thousand calories and then they said they had 1200 calories of raw durian for dinner and this is what they ate in a day right which i put like 1999.79 calories almost 2000 calories so then did they eat enough food this day yes they had 2750 calories based on my estimations but the issue is if we go down to some of these highlighted nutrients, right, how much protein did they get, right? They got 37.2 grams of protein. Unfortunately, the title of the video says, I get all my protein from fruit. <laughs> and the average protein for a guy is, I would say, at least 50 grams of protein for a normal size guy. You know, this considers your height and weight, and I'll share with you guys how to find out how much protein you need in a second. But, you know, clearly, this person ate 37.2 grams of protein, which is not a whole lot. It does not meet the recommended daily allowance. In addition, you know, they're really not eating omega-3 fatty acids. That's another reason to eat the greens is for your omega essential fats, right? They got enough carbs. Yeah, they cranked up the carbs, right? They got enough fiber. But, you know, here's the thing I would say on the fiber, right? All fiber is not created equal. While it is put created equal in, like, the chronometer, there's so many different kinds of fiber. There's soluble, insoluble, ones that are fermentable, ones that are non-fermentable. And different kinds of fiber feed our different bacteria. So we're not even discussing the microbiome today, which I believe a pure fruit diet is going to wreak havoc on your microbiome. And it's not going to give you the microbiome you need for long-term health. Once again, long-term. 
In addition, you know, some of the nutrients are just not even showing up. Vitamin K, they're definitely not getting enough vitamin K. Of course, B12 is not on there because they're, you know, you're not going to get that unless you supplement. Some of the B vitamins are a little bit low, but you know what? It's, it's pretty pretty cool that they did so well. But if we go down to the minerals, right, they're really, they're going to leach their bones eating all this fruit, right? They got 37% of their calcium requirement in this day, right? Why do you some you know, fruitarians have clear teeth because calcium is being leached out of their bones because when, before they were, you know, fruitarian, they ate, you know, standard American foods and milk that had calcium. So it's stored in your bones and your teeth. And now your body sucks it out <laughs> of your stores to give it to you because you're not eating enough. If you're eating a deficient diet in all fruit that is not appropriately planned. Likewise, things like selenium and zinc and even sodium. I've known raw vegans fruitarians who were sodium deficient and had problems with that, right? And clearly this raw vegan who's eating all fruit is not getting enough sodium. Now, yes, we don't want to overeat sodium. Most Americans eat way too much sodium, but you need to get enough and they need to be in range. And clearly this is not in range, including zinc. Zinc is very important for Im immune system. If you're a fruitarian getting sick all the time, you know, maybe one of the reasons is you're not getting enough zinc and you can see their protein numbers just look horrible down the line right it's just very low they got a couple you know good ones but like some of them are just really not good if we highlight it we could click on it you could see you know the the mangoes gave them the most the durian gave them some the watermelon gave them some the mature coconut immature coconut water didn't give them a lot at all so yes, so you guys could clearly see, in my opinion, this raw vegan is deficient in protein because they're just, they're eating enough calories, right? But they didn't meet their protein requirements at 52 grams a day, right? Next up, another raw vegan, what I eat in a day, fruit. Um, not going to say who it was, but uh, she was like, I eat a bunch of watermelon, quarter of a watermelon, of a big watermelon, so I said that's 48 ounces, I ate four apples, I ate six oranges, I had four medjool dates, I had a handful of cherries, and then, you know, we could go down and see how much nutrients they got, and once again, you know, the protein, 24.3 grams of protein, so an average male is supposed to get 50, if you're a female, maybe you'll need like, I don't know, 40, depending on your weight, but nonetheless, 24 grams of protein is definitely not enough. Also missing the essential fatty acids, uh, you know, the zinc, sodium lo low, selenium low as well. Calcium, definitely better than the first fruitarian, but still not meeting the calcium needs. And, you know, in addition, some of the B vitamins were a bit better on here. Um, but also, you know, the vitamin K was a little bit better than the previous one. And so was the vitamin E. But still, these are very low numbers. And to eat only this in a day, I would say is not healthy. You can see the, the green numbers here are good. The, you know, the yellow numbers are concerning. I'm glad at least they're not red. <laughs> So yes, I, I want you guys to appropriately plan out what you're eating in a day. Okay, so here's an example of what I eat. I've been eating lately in a day. So for breakfast, I'll have basically a green juice with about 48 ounces of lettuce, um, 8 ounces of celery, 10 ounces of collard greens, fresh picked from my garden in my juice. And then I get a bunch of calories from there, but also I get protein. My next meal, I'll have like a grain bowl, which I just had a little bit a while ago. I'll have oatmeal and or with other grains. Link down below my video, how I make a probiotic and prebiotic rich oatmeal. Lately, I've been putting like four high chia persimmons, like the gooey persimmons after I take the seeds out. So that's like, that's like the maple syrup. I don't eat maple syrup because I got fresh, <laughs> like jelly fruit, man. That's so delicious. I'll put in a little bit of flax seed, some maquis berry powder, some uh, probiotic, uh, prebiotic powder, and then some uh, coconut kefir, probably a few other things too. So I'll get a bunch of nutrition from that. Later, I'll go ahead and eat fajoas fresh off my tree. I'll eat probably a half pound, maybe a little bit more than that. And then I'll have a big salad for dinner with kale, bok choy, spinach. For dressing, I'll make orange juice, one cup blended with a few less than an ounce of cashew nuts, a few Brazil nuts, and some low-sodium miso, right? And then I'll have a salad with that. I might add some cooked kidney beans to the salad, just nine ounces of kidney beans, guys, after I have my raw salad. Then I'll, with the cooked kidney beans on top, then I'll maybe have like a purple sweet potato 
you know, to round out my night, and then maybe like a, a few sprouted pumpkin seeds from Go Raw. Now let's take a look at my nutrients. So I consume about 2393 calories, right? Definitely less than the first uh, you know, pure fruitarian that had 2750 and he had one, two, four different foods. Look at all the different foods that I consume, guys. I consume so many different types of foods, right? Increasing my microbiome diversity, 2300 calories. And if we look at my chart, right? I got a few reds because they're too high. <laughs> so my protein is over the top at 85 grams of protein, right? Every day is non-typical because I don't do my chronometer every day. But as you guys can see, I'm rocking basically almost all the different amino acids and getting even more protein than I need. So I could probably cut out some of the greens or some of the nuts and seeds if I wanted. As you guys can see, I'm really kicking butt on my omega-3 fatty acids, which I tend to concentrate on more than my omega-6. Um, of course, I'm getting enough carbohydrates, getting a lot of fiber. Let's take a look at my vitamins. You can see my vitamins are in pretty good shape. Some of my B vitamins are low, so I have been supplementing B vitamins, including B12. My folate's kicking butt. My vitamin K is off the charts. My vitamin E, yeah, that's a little bit low. Uh, but my vitamin uh, A and C are also kicking butt. And let's take a look at the minerals. Trace minerals are essential for our health. That is just really not talked about enough in raw foods. They, they, are, they, they, they really are like if you're making a, a, a cookie dough, you need all the ingredients of a cookie dough to make, you know, the cookie, to make the cookies or they don't stick together. And like the minerals in our bodies are like part of the recipe for our body to work. And if you don't have enough minerals, then systems in your body will not be functioning my zinc yeah my zinc is a little bit low probably could include some more like pumpkin seeds or some watermelon seeds for that my sodium is on the is on the low end so like my goal is to get like around a thousand or less you know of sodium a day a thousand is the, like the max so i'm like at 900 my selenium is kicking butt good for my immune system so you guys can see you know my basic day right is is pretty solid with in terms of nutrition right i don't run the chronometer every day but if you're new into raw foods if you think you're getting all your nutrients put your money where your mouth is at least before you make a video saying i get all my protein from fruit and if you put your stuff in chronometer you'll see oops i'm not getting my protein from fruit. So anyways, next up, let's go ahead and see how much protein do you need to eat in a day according to Harvard Health. And they basically say you need 0.36 grams per pound, right? Per day. So let's work. How much does that work out to be? Well, then you want to go to this out. And once again, all these links are down below so you guys could figure out what it is for you. You could go to DRI calculator for healthcare professionals. You put in your, uh, you know, your male or female, your age, your height, your weight, your activity level. You press submit. And what it gives back to you is the DRI calculator results based on your specific, you know, situation. So here's the male, blah, blah, blah. And it says, these are the macronutrients. You need 54 grams of protein a day. Clearly in this first one, right? How many grams of protein? 37 grams of protein. That's not cutting it, guys. It says we need 54. It'll tell you how many grams of fat. And this is based on government recommended numbers. Now, whether you believe them or not, you could say, oh, I don't believe those. We need way less protein. You know, well, then I'll say good luck to you. <laughs> of course, you could also see all your different vitamin requirements as well. And, you know, this you could kind of, but then also chronometer kind of takes these calculations into consideration when you set up your account there as well. So that's how you guys could know how much protein you need a day. Now, more importantly, let's figure out why the fruitarian is not getting enough protein. And that's, we're going to go to this chart, myfooddata.com. Once again, links down below to this. I want you guys to use these tools so you guys don't become a deficient fruitarian if that's the diet you decide to eat. Right. So go to this tool. I'll send you, I'll put this link up where you could basically rank foods by protein and choose fruits. And then you're going to choose 200 calories of fruits. And we're going to find out the, the fruits highest in protein. Rhubarb raw has six, 8.6 grams of protein per 200 calories. Now, Rhubarb, I would not consider a fruit. It's more of a stem vegetable and it's high in oxalates. So generally you probably should be cooking it. Goji berries dried, right? That's kicking ass. 
8.2 grams of protein for 200 calories. Cassava melons, for some reason, are an outlier at almost 8 grams. You know, but if we go down the list, right, blackberries, 6.5. What's some other common ones down here? Cantaloupes, five grams, you know, per 200 calories. Like, wow, that seems like a lot. Nectarines, 4.8. That's pretty solid, John. Let's go down a little bit further, right? Strawberries, 4.2. Chamura, 4.2. Valencia oranges, 4.2. All right, seems reasonable. Watermelon, 4.1. That's pretty good. We could go down further to honeydew is 3.0. You know, mangoes are 2.7, so they're a lot lower. Um, we could go down further. Blueberries are 2.6. Lychees, 2.5. Bananas, people, raw food is favorite. 2.4 grams of protein for 200 calories. So basically, uh, eat 200 calories of bananas, you only get 2.4 grams of protein. That's a lot of bananas you're going to have to eat to make your cal your, your protein requirements. Fajoas. This is what I'm eating, 2.3. That's a small part of my diet. And if we go down, durian. Durian is two grams. So you eat 200 calories of durian, you get two grams of protein. You're probably getting more fat because durian's a pr uh, kind of a more fatty fruit, you know, and only has two grams of protein. Grapes, people love their grapes, 1.9. But I want you guys to look up this list, right? We can't continue to go down. We could go down and look, Fuji apples are 0. 0.6 grams of protein for 200 calories, guys. Galas are 0. 0.9, Red Delicious are 0. 0.9. So maybe we could say, just round up, because apples in general could be just one gram of protein for 200 calories. So yes, it is absolutely true that fruit contains protein. The challenge is for 200 calories of fruit, you can't protein. So guys, let's take a look at the vegetables, right? Once again, link down below the vegetable ranking tool, right? So you guys could pull this up. 200 calories of vegetables. How many calories and 200 grams of vegetables, right? To remind you guys on the fruit chart, 8.6 was the highest, which is rhubarb, which we're not going to count, but we will count goji berries dried, 8.2. But then most common fruits were down in the, you know, two to three to one range, right? Especially apples. If we go to the vegetables, right? Look at this. The number one food is spirulina. 200 calories of spirulina, guys, is 45.5 grams of protein. So literally, if you need 50 grams of protein, you eat 200 calories of spirulina a day. Then you just pig out on fruit. You got your protein requirements met. Also, spirulina has a lot more nutrition than just the protein. It has all different kinds of phytonutrients, right? Another real winner, which more raw vegans should eat. I, I think I've maybe grown it somewhere in my garden. Uh, is a watercress, 41.8 grams per 200 calories. Oh, dried spirulina is 39.6. I guess maybe this is... Oh, this is... Fresh spirulina, which if you live in LA, you guys could get that. When I'm in LA, I, I do get it. Throw some alfalfa sprouts, right? Alfalfa sprouts, really rich in protein as well. Uh, nori seaweed, really rich in protein. Pumpkin leaves, cook broccoli rob. Kidney bean sprouts, don't recommend you guys eat those unless they're um, cooked. Button mushrooms, 28, right? Chrysanthemum leaves, this is one of my favorites, man. 28 grams, I lo love the flavor. Water spinach, I grew it abundantly in my garden. It just I just noticed it freeze froze out. Uh, 27.4 grams per 200 calories, right? Cooked spinach, 25.8 grams, right? Bok choy or pak choy, 26 grams of protein per 200 calories. So you guys could clearly see it's a lot easier to get protein grams from your greens and vegetables instead of your fruits. You could eat a lot less vegetables to get a lot more protein. What if you ate 400 calories of spinach, you would meet your caloric needs in a day. You don't have to eat 400 calories of spinach, but eat, eat 200 calories calories of spinach, you'll get half your protein, then eat the other half in fruit. But when you're doing these all fruit diets, it makes it extremely difficult to get all your protein from the fruit. And then, you know, let's say, oh, that people say nuts and seeds have lots of protein. So once again, link down below to this. Nuts and seeds ranking protein by 200 calories. Hemp seeds has 11.4. This pales in comparison to the greens, right? 200 calories of hemp seeds. It's a lot smaller amount, of course. Um, so you could really, just a few nuts and seeds could really amp up your protein. Let's see here. Um, black walnuts, coconut water has some protein. So yeah, drink more pro coconut water. Pistachio nuts, almonds. Oh, and this is probably the 
mature coconut water as, as, as the coconut is old, they're not the young one. Flax seeds, almond butter, right? Cashews, 200 calories of cashews, guys. Not a lot of cashews, you got 6.6 .6 grams. That's still kicking butt over most fruits except dried fruits. So maybe eat some dried goji berries and some dried nuts, right? <laughs> Rank up your protein calories, all right? So, you know, clearly, guys, there is no excuse for not getting enough protein if you have a properly planned raw vegan diet. And for some examples, I want to go over to YouTube and show you guys this amazing channel, the Vegan Solution Channel, what I eat in a day raw vegan with chronometer info. She shows what she eats in a day all raw vegan, fruits and vegetables with some nuts and seeds, appropriately planned and drinks juice, eats lots of fruit, eats some vegetables, and she kicks butt on her protein, but also other nutrients as well. So if you want to know what to eat, eat kind of like model her. She has some, she has a bunch of videos. Look, she's eating watermelon. She's eating a whole bowl of bananas, but she's eating a big salad with some avocado, right? What I ate today, she has lots of these, you know, where she blends up bananas, has a big salad. You could have fruits. You could have vegetables. You can meet your protein requirements. Just do it smart. All right, so I'm sitting in my garden here now, and I want to share with you guys some simple, real-world examples of this to really drive my point home, okay? So you guys saw that fruit has less protein per calorie than vegetables, and let's do a couple examples for you. Apples, I got an apple here, right? Say this apple was 200 calories. It's a little bit small to be 200 calories, but say it was 200 calories. If this apple was 200 calories and I eat the whole thing, how many grams of protein am I getting? gonna get right according to the charts that we saw you get one gram of protein for eating 200 calories of apple so say you ate nothing but apples because you're doing mono apple meal day which also i don't recommend necessarily mono apple meal days or mono fruit days right um, it's great you're going to get a lot of certain nutrients but you're going to miss out on a lot of other nutrients and once again protein is just one of many different nutrients in a food uh, but say you ate 2,000 calories of apple right and that's going to be basically um, 10 times 1, that's 1 gram of protein, times 10, you're going to get 10 grams of protein by eating nothing but 2,000 calories of apples, right? If you ate 4,000 calories of apples, how many grams of protein would you have? You'd have 20 grams of protein, right? So this is how you can not get enough protein by eating mono fruit meals. If you choose your fruit accordingly, right? Apples have one gram of protein. Most fruits have pretty low protein content, guys. Some have more than others. One that has a lot is actually, I'm finding one right here, really funny. It's this guy, this little fruit. You know what this fruit is? This is a dried goji berry that I grew on my plant. It dropped in the ground and then it just dried here. Goji berries are probably one of the highest food, fruits in protein. I think this is like a uh, I don't know, what is it, eight grams per 200 calories. So it's like eight times as much protein as apples. How many fruitarians pig out on goji berries? Now, of course, dried goji berries are dried, concentrated, higher sugar content as well, but at least they got some protein. So if you want to be a fruitarian that gets their protein from fruits, you got to eat higher protein fruits, guys. Goji berries, <laughs> that was good. It's one of the top. That being said, I don't want you guys to restrict to eating only fruits, right? Yeah, eating only fruits is great. People love fruits. And I know there's some raw food teachers that teach only eat fruit because it's the best. It's the number one detox food and all this kind of junk and don't eat vegetables and vegetables are bad for us. Cruciferous vegetables are bad, blah, 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 blah. Man, that's all dog in my opinion. I want you guys to eat your damn vegetables and I swore, so... Here's the thing, we got all the bok choy, we got a couple different varieties here, but nonetheless, if I ate 200 calories of bok choy, right, and bok choy approximately is 100 calories per pound, so if I ate two pounds of bok choy, I'd have 26 grams of protein if I ate two pounds of bok choy. So if I ate nothing but 400 calories of bok choy, how many grams of protein would I get? 26 plus 26, is 52 grams of protein. So I could get 52 grams of protein eating four pounds of bok choy approximately and have my protein requirements for the day. You don't have to do one or the other. 
hey, eat a pound of apples, right? Get some protein from that. But then eat two pounds of bok choy. You got 26 grams there. And, you know, you're, you're getting a few, you know, grams from the apples. And hopefully you're eating other nuts and seeds, other different kinds of plant foods, other different kinds of vegetables. They all have protein. But, guys, you need to focus on eating some higher protein content foods like bok choy or like the lettuce behind it or like the spinach behind it or like the collard greens or the kale that have a lot more protein per gram than the fruit. All right, so I get it. Some of you fruitarians out there that love your fruit don't want to eat any greens. That's all right. I don't care if you guys don't want to eat greens. I want you guys to get your protein somehow. And if you want to eat the least amount of protein-rich plant foods without eating vegetables because you guys want to do that, I want to encourage you guys to at least eat some algae. This spirulina, Hawaiian spirulina, guys, this is probably one of the most protein-rich foods on the planet. Guess how many grams of protein are in 200 calories of spirulina, right? 200 calories of spirulina is 45.5 grams of protein. So literally, if you ate 200 calories of spirulina in a day, you would basically almost meet all your protein requirements. So yeah, guys, have a bunch of spirulina, you know, a day, dump it in your smoothie, with bananas to increase your protein content and you could still eat lots of fruit but then get your protein from spirulina right <laughs> and, you know and i and people that are on a plant-based or raw vegan diet that are not eating enough protein because they're not properly planting because they're not eating dark leafy greens right add spirulina or chlorella algaes have lots of protein in them compared to other plant foods right if you guys are thinking you need a protein powder right in isolate isolated protein i don't recommend that i recommend you guys get some spirulina chlorella or other algae powders that's high in protein you could also get this stuff called lentin powder or duckweed powder very high in protein i'll have a video on that in the future you know if you think you're protein deficient right i mean but that's the thing it the thing is this like just eat your damn greens most people don't eat enough greens that's why i drink a green juice every single day out of quart of green juice which is basically four pounds of vegetables these days it's mostly romaine heart so i could get my protein a big jump of protein on the day early on before i even eat anything else and let's not forget right protein is only one of many components of food there's vitamins and minerals and fibers in foods but more importantly to me there's vast amounts of phytochemicals and different kinds of micronutrients and trace minerals that are essential in all the different kinds of foods. You know, I look up published studies a lot, guys. And, you know, just to say that eating only fruits is going to give you everything you need, right? Well, it gives us everything we need to survive and live. But will you thrive on only fruit? My opinion is absolutely not. There are different kinds of properties in cruciferous vegetables that are anti-cancer, anti-aging, and help our livers detoxify. Right? And if you never eat greens, especially the brassica greens, right, you're never going to get these phytonutrients that may protect you from cancer and other diseases. Right, So I don't want you guys to restrict yourself to eating only fruit. I want you guys to unrestrict your diet. Of course, if you guys want to stick to only fruit, guys, please, before you make a video that say, I get all my protein from fruit, at least do your research and, find, and eat the fruits that are high in protein before you make yourself look like an ass on YouTube and you know it's it just really sad to me that there's just a lot of dogma out there and people follow dogma and you know believe these absolute statements like as long as you eat enough calories you're gonna get enough protein yeah there's an asterisk around that if you eat a properly planned fruit and vegetable diet with a lot of variety right you can meet all your protein needs but once again protein is only one requirement and unfortunately in America and other places around the world we focus on the protein requirement what I really want you guys to focus on is your phytonutrient requirement the studies are clear to me that the phytonutrients are what really is important for long life and you know better health and it's not just about the protein because you can eat a lot of protein from meats and you could still die of a heart attack so it's all these plant phytonutrients that are abundant in a range of different fruits and vegetables which are going to give us the longevity power the health power the disease resistance the detoxification we need to stay healthy in an, in an unhealthy world. So that's pretty much all I got for this episode. And I think the, the end of this episode, I want to remind you guys to just eat enough protein, guys. Eat enough greens. You know, I recommend at least a minimum of two pounds of greens a day. 
you know, whether you want to blend them up in a smoothie, whether you want to juice them up or when they want to eat them whole. Minimum, guys, two pounds of greens a day. Link down below. I made in my very garden, like maybe a couple winters ago, um, where I talk about fruit to vegetable ratio. That's why my fruit to vegetable ratio is critical, guys. You eat enough fruit. If you eat too much fruit, you're not eating enough vegetables. You're not going to have a well-rounded diet. You're not going to get enough protein. You're not going to get enough different trace minerals, right? And you're going to fail in the long term. And then you're going to be an ex-raw vegan or fruitarian that ends up going to eat meat. And there have been a lot of them lately. And there's so many reasons why that happens. And, you know, restricting the food you're eating is just one of the many reasons. <laughs> so hopefully this video, you know, shed some light on that topic based on my opinions on this subject so that you guys could succeed instead of fail on whatever raw vegan style diet you guys want to do. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. More importantly, guys, please share this with other people that are on a pure fruitarian diet to make sure they get enough protein before they make videos that say, oh, I get enough protein on my fruitarian diet. And then clearly, if somebody is to run the numbers, what if a carnivore did this? They would blow up, man. I mean, this is kind of a mild video because I wanted to, I want to provide solutions instead of just rank on people for like doing it wrong, right? I want you guys to improve. So, yeah, share this with people that need to know how to get enough protein on their plant-based or raw or fruitarian diet. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. I'll go to places where no other raw vegan channel will. I'll share with you guys knowledge and publish studies based on the evidence on how to incorporate the healthiest raw vegan diet so that you guys can succeed in the long term, right? I've been doing this 28 years now. And I want you guys to succeed just as much as I have succeeded. And you know what? I had to learn from the school of hard knocks myself. And I don't want you guys to go there. Make sure you click the little bell to get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be searching for past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 700 episodes at this time on the channel dedicated to teach you guys all about how to eat a healthy, nutrient-dense, raw, plant-based diet as healthy as possible. Links down below some of my videos in the past I've made that are, you know, maybe more controversial topics, including the ones on resistant starch, heat processing your food, getting enough greens. These are all essentials that I think every raw vegan should watch. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.